guys I'm trying not to do too many videos but this one for this one I had to because I have to clarify a few things I mentioned that first our quote for the day is makeup is an art skincare is a science if you do not learn to approach skincare as a science you will never get your skincare right that's why you need to learn how people who excel at skincare do it because they approach it as a science my skincare started working for me when i started watching informational videos by dermatologists even before i started this um journey of actually becoming one i just used to listen and um i find myself unique um I'm, i feel like i'm a unique uh, brand of doctor because not only am i focused on the clinical but i'm also focused on the cosmetic application of the science that i learn so that's why i try to give women the women that i treat a wholesome experience where i'm not just treating what you're suffering from probably by recommending a treatment myself or referring you to a colleague to see who's a bit senior and more advanced at what you're you're suffering from but i also try to give you the cosmetic um solutions that can match your stage of skincare at the time that you see me so that you have what we call a holistic care experience where you know most medical treatments for dermatology are harsh so you need the cosmetic skincare to just balance the harshness of the clinical skincare and um, I, I bring those two together I feel for the women that I meet and not only do I do that but I also teach you why I'm bringing it together so makeup is an art skincare is a science you have seen I posted about Fitzpatrick the reason why I brought makeup into the picture is because the skincare industry has really been taken over by um, people who are well um what would i see they they have specialized a lot in cosmetics and how they explain skincare sometimes is not right and um sometimes also the methods that that they use to solve your skincare issues yes work but can be a bit ex too expensive sometimes because they are borrowing aspects of western or asian skincare that don't necessarily work for us um because we our background is different um we come from a country that um is not very advanced as far as skincare is concerned but also most women cannot afford to use treatments that women from much more developed countries use like i'll give examples let me give a, a perfect example to stay young i use a cream that at most will cost 300 shillings but that cream is similar to the formulation that retinol has and retinol can cost about 3000 for example but if i use that 300 shillings and another person uses retinol which is mostly used in um developed countries to keep women youth youthful we get the same effect and i actually get a better effect but now if you don't understand the science you wouldn't know that there's a cheaper option you will think ah oh, i can't afford retinol for 4k so i can't be young no if you cannot afford retinol for 4k which is a bit gentler there is the option which is a bit cheaper so that is why you have to understand the science because sometimes you might end up finding more affordable solutions to get the effect that you want and 
so the guys who advise on skincare and probably sound a bit expensive they come from a makeup background where they have learned skincare as an art they have seen people on tv looking beautiful and have copied what those people are doing how those people make themselves up the art that they've used to become who they are they have copied that and brought it to you but they've not understood the science but if somebody like me understands the science fine i'll see i like using beyonce as an example fine i'll see beyonce's skin looking good but because i understand the science i know beyonce is probably using a product to glow that costs fifty thousand a bottle but because i understand the science i find the substitute that costs 300 shillings i still get a beyonce effect but on 300 shillings this is why it's important to understand the science this is why it's important not to borrow what um people who are fair skinned have fair, are fair skinned are doing and not understanding why you're doing it just because a white woman is using retinol doesn't mean that you have to use retinol you can use another option that also matches your skin type i've introduced the word skin type because in here our skincare industry in kenya you will see somebody telling you that for them to somebody who's not really well versed in skin science telling you that for them to understand your skin they have to type it as oily combination dry or they they ask you what skin type do you think you are and that is how they give you your treatment but that is an inefficient way to look at skin because for you to actually be dry or combination or oily you actually just have some imbalance going on and those are symptoms medically we call those symptoms yani when you come to me and tell me you feel oily that's a symptom it's not a skin type skin type is something permanent something that you are and you cannot change for example i have a history of eczema so my skin moved from dry when i was treating myself it moved to combination and when i changed my treatments over time it became normal normal so you see you cannot say and the treatments i've used are very cheap by the way what i've used to change that um sequence is not even more than 3k or actually 3k and it's it's a pack of 3k i i buy and use for three months it's the products that i show you that i use so that's not skin type that's a skin symptom skin type is actually who you are that you cannot change so that is why in dermatology or in in skincare that is science we use the you the part of you that you cannot change that's why fitzpatrick was developed where regardless of whether your skin is feeling dry or oily combination or whatever people use we don't even use that when you go to a dermatologist's office don't even ask those questions they don't apply because regardless of what symptom you're presenting with the steps of treating skin that's sick are usually the same so it does not matter but if you are mixed race for example you're a pointy your skin tone texture and um it's usually tone texture how does your skin feel how does your skin look forgotten the other one your tone and texture will be different from me and a girl who's darker like a sudanese so the way if you're a pointy for example and you present with acne the way your acne will scar will be different from the way the acne of a person like my skin tone will scar and a person with lupita nyongo skin will scar totally different so that means a dermatologist or an expert will pick you all have acne i'm just using hypothet hypothetical situation lupita has acne i have acne a pointy has acne yes we have acne but we will be given different treatments i'll give you an example what makes 
the hyperpigmentation scars of acne disappear in a pointy is not what works for hyperpigmentation scars of acne in me. Something else will come at the top. Like you guys have heard of azelaic acid, an ingredient in the market that's usually found to work well for hyperpigmentation scars of acne for women of color. But if you give that to a woman who's fairer, it might not work as well. But we all have acne. So that is why in dermatology, typing your skin first, especially in dermatologists who see a variety of women, is, impo is important. And that is why I have to teach you this to understand also because most women right now are going for treatments um, that are procedures. And you might find that our dermatologists, our clinical dermatologists, Dermatologists are actually all clinical dermatologists. For them to become dermatologists, they have to be go through the clinical training. That's why we call the ones that the one that's missing there is clinical dermatologists. Now, when they sub specialize, they become clinical and cosmetic dermatologists. So when I say clinical dermatologists, I'm referring to all dermatologists. That's how it, it goes. So um Clinical dermatologists in Kenya are few, so most of them are burdened in treating the clinical aspects of skincare. So very few of them are doing derm um, dermatology procedures or skin procedures that are advanced. So you will meet somebody who has started an aesthetic clinic doing advanced treatments for you, which is good. So those who can afford to do those advanced treatments it is best for them to understand why those treatments are being given. And it also saves money if you have first completed your treatment with a clinical dermatologist. And if you understand the science, then you'll understand what I mean. For example, I have had some of you on my email telling me that you um, saw a clinical dermatologist for your acne. You dropped off at some point probably on your own. And then you started going to a cosmetic clinic somewhere posh. And you're having various procedures, microneedling, microdermabrasion, um, dermabrasion, um, deep cl clinical, uh, deep chemical pills. And I'm glad that you can afford to do that. That's wonderful. But if you don't understand the basis of you going to seek the cosmetic care of an aesthetician, then you will spend a lot of money. I'm not trying to run anybody out of business, but this is the truth. You can be spending about 10,000 shillings for hydrafacials um, and all those really fancy words in skincare. <clears throat> but the one thing you missed to do, actually, that you should have done, that will give you an even longer lasting effect than that hydrafacial or whatever it is that you're taking, is just to sit down with a clinical dermatologist and get a prescription. Let's say your acne is really bad. You've seen people on the internet, even in Kenya, uh, removing a white stuff from people's acne. They're using comedone extractors. They usually have one. So you see them doing com comedone extraction and then they tell you, oh, we're doing very good facials here. We remove the impurities from your skin. It's detoxification. But guess what? You could have avoided all that pain by just seeing a clinical dermatologist for a powerful chemical pill, for example, um, either as a deep chemical pill treatment or a superficial chemical treatment like a retinoid, like the tretinoid that I showed that I use to keep breakups away, <clears throat> breakouts away. Or you would have gone for an oral drug um, called isotretinoin. Accutane, Roaccutane, you've had the names before. Um, you would have used that. Your skin would have become smooth. You wouldn't have needed to go to feel that pain of extraction. Because those guys don't put numbing, numbing agents on your skin. You actually withstand comedone extra extraction. Looking at the esthetician like this. You would have gone for a simpler option that will not leave scarring behind on your skin. Because even when those things are popped out, they can leave scarring and you still have to treat the scarring. 
So you're doing double work. You can have extraction done by a dermatologist. You've seen Dr. Pimple Popper. But that doctor will only get there if they've already exhausted every other clinical option that can give you clear skin. That's why you need, when your skin is bad, before you go to that clinic that's telling you it's offering facials and does not have a clinical dermatologist on its panel, first see the clinical dermatologist. They can give you something oral to use that costs really little. Your treatments will cost really little compared to the 10,000 you'll spend on only one visit for that facial that you'll go for in that aesthetic clinic. The effects of this will last long, longer. The effects of what you get from the doctor will last longer if you follow the plan. I will talk about isotretinoin, for example, on a different location. Ideally, when you see the doctor for oral treatment, like isotretinoin, and they give it to you, your skin will get smooth after some time when you complete the dose. But what most of us do in stupidity and sorry and ignorance, and also our doctors don't advise as well, you finish the isotretinoin treatment, then you drop off. And you expect that effect to last. And you've dropped off without a maintenance plan. You finish your treatment plan. You, you have just consulted somebody cosmetic online who's told you, okay, now you can use this set of products. But there was a reason why that doctor gave you something oral to take, to control things internally. So there has to be a step down from that treatment that is also clinical. So most times when you finish isotretinoin your treatment, you're supposed to be on a something that you apply that is prescribed by the doctor every day actually for the rest of your life. Those are retinoids, which women use for anti-aging also. That's why I've mentioned when you actually have acne, the treatments that you give, all of them actually, most of them, most of them, if they're not hormonal treatments, which I'll get to, like contraceptives or something called spir spironolactone anyway if they're not hormonal treatments actually they are anti-aging agents so most women who've been treated for acne by a clinical dermatologist usually end up looking much better than most people who even have normal skin because they also experience an anti-aging effect from the treatment that they got from the clinical dermatologist so you can even use that treatment those treatments now you're given because you usually are not on isotretinoin alone. You'll be given something to apply every day. You can still use those treatments on the advice of your clinical dermatologist. After that, not only to prevent acne breakouts, but they are also anti-aging agents. That's why it's important to go seek treatment for your acne from the clinical dermatologist. But I've, um, I have moved away from the main point of this video. <clears throat> I got to that because I was discussing hyperpigmentation scars. And yes, we can be different skin colors, but we are given different treatments for our acne because of our skin types. The reason why I mentioned this acne in broad detail is because your acne treatment will not match the skin type. Let's say my acne treatment, for example, will not match Lupita's acne treatment and neither will it match a pointy's acne treatment that is because of skin type so i want to read something online um that i found that i felt was really um helpful categories four to six um usually has asians who are dark skinned not the fair asians and people who are considered ethnic um populations and latina they're quite a number etc and pointies and dark-skinned women of different tones it's four to six some women have seen that fitzpatrick scale that i have um put up and say there needs to be more categorization no there actually doesn't because that scale is not according to your tone that scale is according to the treatments, the treatment categories that are given to different skin tones and types, depending on their melanin. So it's not about your skin tone. But actually, that scale, to show you how powerful it is, how do you think they develop makeup palettes? How do you think they develop? You see the nude um, fashion that is online right now, uh, like Skims, Kim Kardashian has produced a nude line. 
for her to develop that tone, they use Fitzpatrick scale. Because if they categorize makeup in those tones, if they categorize clothes, nude clothes in those tones, then they get as close as they can to offering products that satisfy every skin tone. So that is the purpose. But let me read this um, really nice um, <clears throat> information I got on the net. So I want to use hyperpigmentation, for example, to sensitize you on why knowing the Fitzpatrick typing is important and why we use it in skincare. And if somebody asks you, if you're seeking treatment somewhere and somebody asks you whether your oily combination dry, fine, answer what you think. But somebody who's a bit more sophisticated in skincare will not ask you those questions. And I'm just making this video because I, when I'm dealing with you, because when you guys write me messages, you will write, I'm a dry skin type, fine. I'm an oily skin type, fine. I'm a combination skin type, fine. Or you will ask me, I want to know my skin type. And your version of skin type is different from mine. So I want to just set it straight that I don't do that oily combination typing, dry, whatever. This is what I do. And this is why. For example, for hyperpigmentation treatments, and why I want you to know this, is because very many women are suffering acne and they have black marks. And by the way, if your acne is leaving really dark marks on your skin, you need to see a doctor because you have ongoing inflammation. Acne is a chronic inflammation on your skin with factors driving it that, that I help you understand, but they are continuous factors, they are daily factors. So if you don't go to a doctor, then you do not stop that driving force. You're continuously injuring your skin integrity on your own effort. You need to see a clinical dermatologist. So hyperpigmentation treatments for dark skin black skin asian skin generally this is fitzpatrick 4 to 6. if you are experiencing hyperpigmentation from age spots age spots is what let's say somebody who is asian skin can get from really seeking we call it seeking the sun where they are going out in the sun and beyond 20 minutes without um sunscreen that has an adequate spf of 30 and above acne scars which is common here most of our women are fair skinned. So they do have noticeable dark marks. Melasma, which is darkening because of pregnancy. You fall and you fall under Fitzpatrick 4 to 6. Or a blood related someone who falls under these categories. This is another way of saying pointies, for example, in our setting. Then this information is for you. So we call this ethnic skin also or skin of color. Most skin that has some sort of ethnic background tend to have thicker skin. We have thicker skin. We have oilier skin. So we'll tend to break up more and have acne more. We have more challenges in hyperpigmentation, by the way. That is why when you have acne and it's leaving dark marks on your skin, by the way, unfortunately, the dermatology that has been there for a long time, that's why even on the net, and that is the skincare information that people who sell cosmetic skincare borrow most of the information on the net is for women of fairer skin types so you find that people who are selling cosmetics in kenya are usually actually selling what works for fairer skin types so what you're buying from people who are not clinical dermatologists who have given you a prescription actually unfortunately has been made to suit people of fairer skin types so that's why most times you're buying cosmetic grade skincare for a medical problem of your skin and it will not give you the effects that you want. The common complaint of people who see dermatologists is the treatment worked, but after the treatment, I went back to my problem. But you rarely hear somebody saying that the treatment did not work. With cosmetic skincare, you will hear somebody saying that the treatment did not work. And they spent a lot of money. But with medical skincare, most of them the treatment works, but you go back to the problem. And the reason why you go back to the problem is because you had a treatment plan, yes, but you did not go back for a maintenance plan to your doctor for follow-up. Once your skin cleared, you said, ah, my consultations have ended. Yes. That's not what you're supposed to do. So our hyperpigmentation, by the way, 
you know why women who have dark skin ethnic skin in in western countries suffer because the doctors the dermatologists there do not understand their skin it's only until now that things have developed that there are black dermatologists in the field so they're developing the skin of color debates but they suffer because Kwanza, if you have the acne that leaves dark marks on your face and you live abroad, you will suffer a bit. You will suffer. Because you will see doctors who don't understand your skin. It's even better you come to Africa, you come to Kenya and see a dermatologist here to treat your acne, then you go back. <laughs> so, you have to see a doctor. So, you will have more challenges in hyperpigmentation. Also, hyper, hypopigmentation, where um, your melanin, hyperpigmentation is an overproduction of melanin due to stress conditions like the illness that you're living on your skin, like the acne you're living on your skin, you're stressing your skin. That black mark that you're producing is telling you that your skin is stressed and you need to relieve that stress. That's why you see a doctor. But there's hypopigmentation. Like you remember Michael Jackson had vitiligo? His vitiligo was such a challenge to treat that he had to go white all over. And that is why the dermatologist he was seeing, it's because the dermatologist he was seeing at that time were not as advanced in treating vitiligo in skin of color. So you understand why Fitzpatrick for us is important. Because if the dermatologist at his time understood the Fitzpatrick scale for skin of color, they would have recommended other treatments. Most likely, his dermatologist was white. There's no problem with white dermatologists, but it's only until now that we're developing to understand how to treat skin of our color, even though Kenya is not advanced. So there are other medical conditions mentioned like uh, petriasis vesicala. This, if you're in medicine, you will understand these things because they're mentioned quite a bit. Petriasis alba, uh, acne can also give hypopigmentation um, after it heals where the melanin looks like it's gone a bit so a woman can look lighter skinned in one area more than another. Um... No, wait. The hypopigmentation was actually vitiligo, tinea vesicala, petriasis alba. Um, I'll confirm about how acne can give you a change in um, 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 pigment. And that I can give on a separate session when I'm discussing acne. But you also have problems with keloids. Our skin is unique to having keloids because we heal um our wounds in a different way than people with fairer skin wound uh, fairer skin heal so we tend to develop keloids more that is why understanding our skin is important because like when a dermatologist or a surgeon is making a cut on your skin they are supposed to make it in a certain way because then if they don't and you had a history of keloids maybe and it wasn't mentioned or you 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 didn't have one before you can form one at that point. You have to have procedures done in a certain way because we are at risk of hypertrophic scars and keloids more than people who are fairing, fairer skins. So that's why knowing our skin types is important. Okay. Those who have fair skin and have a mixed heritage may find that even though you may have fair skin, you may begin to have hyperpigmentation more than a typical Fitzpatrick one or two. Why do you think people with mixed heritage are called black? They're not called white. They're called black because everything that applies to their skin applies to ours more than it applies to those who are white. If a pointee gets acne, for example, she will scar more like the rest of us than a white person will or an Asian person who's fair as skin will. So they're categorized with us for a reason. So... Um, those with fair skin, especially those with red hair, will have more pheomelanin. That applies to people who are Mzungus, Asians. Actually, let me point this out. Whether you're Mzungu or Black, we all have melanin, by the way. It's just that the melanin has different names. There's eumelanin, pheomelanin, and then... Um, brown you melanin black you melanin but this are what are found in the different tones we all have melanin it's just they have different names so we can't say a team black 
skins don't crack because they have melanin we all have melanin and we can all crack that's why even black women need to take care of their skin so this especially goes to people who are doing let's say cosmetic skincare because i have some of them watching my videos sometimes um when a woman with dark skin has or skin of color develops hyperpigmentation because i was talking about fitzpatrick scale in reference to hyperpigmentation for example so that you understand why we type there are products that work better for our kind of hyperpigmentation post acne and an example of uh, products that have been mentioned in this article is tyrosinase inhibiting products for example and i think if you're doing cosmetic skincare you should look into that because i get some of you who sell skincare asking questions about how to treat hyperpigmentation on women of our skin color because you're trying the products you've been watching the youtube videos that women who treat fair-skinned women the, the the way they treat them and you're trying to copy that to treat a woman who has darker skin it will work that is why when you're doing cosmetic skincare by the way and you really love what you do you need to partner with a clinical dermatologist because on the points where you are stuck they advise you and you do not disappoint your clients so um the darker your skin is or if <coughs> you're not dark skinned <clears throat> but you find that when you stay in the sun like me i tan easily if i go to the coast even if i apply the physical sunscreen from the pharmacy with zinc oxide or titanium oxide i will become dark immediately i tan easily and i'm not dark skinned the easier but uh, when i go to coast I, I do appear dark skin the easier for this process to take place resulting in the likelihood of hyperpigmentation so if i know i tan easily it means if i had acne by the way and i was leaving it in my skin i would have very dark marks because i have the potential to to go into that process that we call melanogenesis and produce a lot of melanin and scar that's why i'm careful about my skin the reason why i started being careful is because of my my eczema used to make me have dark patches my back was dark my face was dark a bit my legs were dark so i had to learn the concept of skincare to even my tone up and thankfully i managed to do that so this says prevention is the best and the easiest way to deal with hyperpigmentation which will lead to less aggressive treatments okay for example if you have acne and you're forming dark marks and you don't get treatment from a clinical dermatologist now your skin continues to produce melanin and you continue to get darker scars so by the time it hits you that you need to actually see a clinical dermatologist you'll be way gone and it will mean that you will need more aggressive treatments and you will probably not afford those aggressive treatments and if they're aggressive they might be harsh they will be harsh you will not adhere to the treatment. That is why, especially if you have acne and you're darkening, you're a Fitzpatrick 4 or 5. Because 4 and 5, 5 is Fitzpatrick, is me. 4 is a pointy. 4 and 5, our hyperpigmentation scarring is worse than Lupita at Fitzpatrick 6. So you need to see a doctor early so um what actually leads to your hyperpigmentation is inflammation and that is why i mentioned acne is a chronic inflammatory process so you need to go see a doctor to stop the inflammation that is why i told one lady who was doing cosmetic care for one of her clients if your client is darkening for whatever reason and it is not because of a cause that can be removed and the darkening stops for example like melasma once the the darkening sets in in pregnancy once the pregnancy goes the hormonal um influence goes so the darkening resolves but still needs treatment 
But if your client is darkening for an issue like acne that cannot go away, you your client will not benefit from your treatments that are just superficial and cosmetic. You need to advise that patient. And that's why I will recommend, I recommend women who sell cosmetic skincare who I trust. Because I know when they get a patient, for example, who has, they get a client who has acne and they can see that their products are not quite helping this client. The client's still suffering from the acne and darkening. They refer to me quickly. You cannot be a person who's selling cosmetic skincare to a person and you can see that their skin is still darkening from some sort of inflammation and you still insist on adding your own treatments to that person they need to see a doctor please be humane so um best hyperpigmentation treatments for dark skin this is fitzpatrick five and six the best hyperpigmentation treatments for dark skin is a slower, less aggressive treatment because you don't want to induce more scarring. Studies have shown that when using a, a more gentle approach by combining a skin bleaching agent such as hydroquinone with a tyrosinase inhibitor, for example, using an OTC over the counter percentage of 2%, hydroquinone combined with ascorbic acid, azelaic acid, lactic acid, kojic acid, These are actually tyrosinase inhibitors work for hyperpigmentation for Fitzpatrick. Uh, four to six. Preferably, four to six are still classified as dark skin. So, you know even for melasma, the darkening of your facial skin in pregnancy the doctor will usually combine um, hydroquinone um, at a certain percentage. You cannot give hydroquinone if you are in cosmetic or aesthetic skincare if you are not a medical practitioner, please. Also, if you are a lady of Fitzpatrick 4 and 6, 4 to 6, do not buy products with hydroquinone online for personal use without a prescription. They lead to further darkening with time that's why you need to understand your skin type and do treatments that match your skin type so um another topical option is hydroquinone with tretinoin and a corticosteroid that's what they use clinical dermatologists use for melasma because they understand now when you're treating melasma as a cosmetic expert Who's not done skincare science you will google how to treat darkening in pregnancy and you will find treatments of women who are fair skinned and you will be continuously trying to treat this woman with fitzpatrick four to six we're using products that are used for fitzpatrick one to three and you will see that you're not getting results and you will wonder why it's because you did not understand the science so this is my advice even if you're doing cosmetic skincare you need to type your patient with the help of a clinical dermatologist or somebody who has the expertise. Then you customize the treatment based on the Fitzpatrick. So, for example, you will see a woman who's telling you she's darkening with pregnancy and she's not going to see a doctor. She's come to see you who deals with cosmetic skincare first. Then you will see at the all the product line you're dealing with said you can use this and this for 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 melasma so you will give us some some treatments but you will not be getting the effects you wanted at that point you're not getting the effects you wanted realize that that client needs to see a doctor know your boundaries that's why you also need to know fitzpatrick because it will help you improve the care that you give to your clients. So this um, online uh, link, I will post it on my Instagram. So that guys who are selling cosmetic skincare can read it. But it also outlines hyperpigmentation treatments for Indian skin. Which is actually different from the hyperpigmentation treatment for 
black skin. So, for example, hyperpigmentation treatments that work for Indians, arbutin, kojic acid, licorice, that works for them, might not work for us. So, regardless, though, um, of, of what Fitzpatrick you are, if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, it's good to start doing exfoliation and specifically chemical exfoliant, which are chemical pills, which are actually usually given by your dermatologist on prescription. Or you can be given by somebody selling cosmetic skincare. But I'm not here recommending treatments for you. I'm just showing you that your treatments actually, and because hyperpigmentation is what bothers most of you under your eyes because of acne scarring, it actually has to go with a Fitzpatrick skin type. And that is why you see a doctor first or somebody dealing with cosmetic skincare who partners with a medical doctor who's in clinical dermatology. It is good to use an anti-inflammatory product. Um, you will see, I will share this link, you will see, but um, my point was to just show you how Fitzpatrick, knowing your Fitzpatrick type can help you know whether even the people who are selling skincare to you cosmetically are doing the right thing. For example, I told one of the ladies in our WhatsApp skincare group that she's a Fitzpatrick 4 and she did due diligence. She has a history of acne. She actually went online and checked what hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation treatments are suitable for women with Fitzpatrick 4 and she got her answer. The treatments are different for Fitzpatrick 4 hyperpigmentation. The treatment is different for hyper, uh, for Fitzpatrick 5. The, the, the treatments for skincare are different for Fitzpatrick 6. So if you have known your Fitzpatrick type, and that's why I ask the women who will attend our free skincare session, most likely the next one. If you know your Fitzpatrick type now, if you figured it out, Whatever skin issue you will ever have, before you reach out from somebody online to create a package for you, if you do not want to see a doctor because you find that clinical dermatologists are expensive, which is wrong, or are hard to reach, or whatever, you just want to do things yourself, okay? First, Google. What treatments are suitable for blah, blah, blah? Dryness in... Fitzpatrick 4, Fitzpatrick 5, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick 6. For most women, the commonest problem is hyperpigmentation. That's why I will share this link. But ask yourself, you have reached out to that person selling skincare to you online. You should ask yourself, what is my Fitzpatrick type? What were the recommended treatments on Fitzpatrick 4 or 5? Is this person selling the same ingredients that I have seen online? That is why I want you to know your Fitzpatrick type. That's why I taught it to you today. Otherwise, I'll end my session there. And some of you have been asking about the WhatsApp skincare group that I have for women. I give you details. If you ask me about it on WhatsApp or email, the details I left in my bio, Instagram. Otherwise, see you later. Cheers.